Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to a new episode of our Orchid Care for Beginner series. It is the last episode of the year of 2023. So I would like to take a moment to thank you all for watching these videos. I really, really hope they helped you out. This is our fourth year. We are finalizing our fourth year of Orchid Care for Beginners with Repot Me. All of these videos and all of this series has been and is still sponsored by Repot Me. So I would like to say a big, big thank you to you guys for watching and of course to Repot Me who supported my channel for the past years. As you guys know, they have been my main sponsor and the only sponsor of these beginner series. So let's hope that 2024 will bring another season, fingers crossed. And with that said, let's start today's subject. I have a good one for you. Many of you guys asked me what to do if we want to repot a Phalaenopsis orchid, but it has blooms. We're gonna talk all about repotting a blooming Phalaenopsis orchid safely. And I will also tell you a few more things you should know about what can happen or just things you should consider before deciding to repot. Maybe your orchid doesn't really need repotting after all, even if you might think it does. We're gonna talk about all of those things today. But before we start, of course, today's episode is sponsored by repotme.com, who offers you everything you could possibly need to properly take care of your orchid. From potting mixes, to pots, fertilizers, accessories, and everything in between. And not only for orchids, but also for other houseplants, such as succulents and cacti, and of course, everything in between. So I'll link you to their website down below. Feel free to check them out at any time. I'll also link you or share with you the products that I really, really like. I cannot use all of the range of the products they offer because I am in the EU and we have some restrictions when it comes to imports, but I did actually have the chance to test out their potting mixes as well a long time ago and they are great. Anyway, check them out down below. You will have links in the description. And with that said, let us start the video. So I have here a really pretty mini Phalaenopsis orchid. It's one of those new hybrids that are quite fragrant at the flower shop. It has beautiful foliage and I'm thinking I want to repot it, but it is in bloom. Now, Phalaenopsis have the bad quote unquote habit of being in bloom for a long time. So you might want to repot in a month or two months, but your orchid is still in bloom. What do we do? Well, sometimes we have to repot while orchids are in bloom. But before we go ahead and I'll show you how to go about it, let's first talk a little bit about it. I have a list as always, just so we make this tutorial coherent. And let us start with why, generally speaking, we don't advise to repot an orchid while it still has blooms. Repotting, as beneficial as it is long-term for an orchid, it can also be stressful. Whenever we repot an orchid, we risk damaging and disturbing the roots. And this is a stressful process in that particular moment. And whenever orchids are stressed, they tend to conserve energy and allocate it to vital structures such as leaves and roots. And in the case of other orchids, maybe pseudobulbs. Flowers and buds, they're not vital structures. They are very important for the species propagation, but for the individual, they're not important. They are not vital. They do not help the orchid survive as an individual. So whenever an orchid is stressed in any way, shape or form, it is very prone to give up buds, first and foremost, and then flowers and allocate all of that energy to vital structures. Hence why if we repot an orchid while it's in bloom, we risk losing buds and not only buds, blooms as well. In my experience, it is more common to lose buds than blooms. Once the blooms are open, they don't really require as much energy because they're not growing, but it's not uncommon to lose flowers either. So if you want to enjoy flowers, better postpone the repotting if you don't have to repot. Furthermore, as I was saying, repotting can be stressful and sometimes Phalaenopsis hybrids, which are man-made, very complex hybrids at the flower shop, they will not have the same quote unquote instincts as wild orchids would. And sometimes they will not really prioritize vital structures. So what they would do is hang on to those flowers while getting more and more dehydrated and losing leaves, maybe losing roots. I'm sure some of you can relate. I'm sure some of you had that Phalaenopsis, which still had blooms, but below the leaves were yellowing, the roots were rotting, something was off, but it was hanging on to those flowers. With Phalaenopsis hybrids, 
it can actually happen. So repotting an orchid puts it under stress and it's not always the case that it will lose the flowers. It can actually start to damage itself. So overall, repotting while an orchid is in bloom is not advisable unless we really have to. So let's discuss the instances in which we do have to repot and how to go about it. So there are some stuff more important than flowers. If we lose the flowers, okay, it's fine. The orchid can rebloom. But if we lose a root system, that's not okay. So in the case that the potting mix is suffocating the roots, it's not adequate for orchids, which can happen, it is absolutely necessary to repot the orchid even if it has blooms. We always need to prioritize the health of the orchid rather than blooms if we want to maintain it long term. So a suffocating potting mix is one of the best reasons to repot an orchid. Maybe a pot full of sphagnum moss like this one has is not good for your environment, it's unsuitable and you're observing that the roots are starting to go brown. That is a very, very good reason to repot. Then second, maybe the potting mix, even if suitable, is old and it's already starting to rot and break down. And that's especially the case with bark. Bark chips should always maintain their shape and you should not be able to break them easily. I don't have the strength to break this piece of bark. This is fresh bark and this is how it should be for your orchid as well in time and with frequent watering, bark will start to lose its integrity and you would be able to just rip it apart without much effort. In that case, the bark not only becomes more suffocating by becoming crumbly, but it's also becoming more sour. Let's say its pH is really going down and it's becoming acidic. In that case, the roots can also be affected and it's a very good reason to repot just to get rid of that old potting mix and offer new one. So the material itself might be suitable, but the age of the material is just not suitable for the orchid anymore. Another good reason why you might want to repot even if in bloom is if you have pests in the potting mix such as snails or root mealybugs or any other type of infestation you might have. Now there are some insects which are absolutely fine, they're totally benign, they are springtails. Actually they help because they consume dead organic matter, little fungi, little molds. So if you ever see tiny, tiny silvery or white insects that jump around, those are fine, those are springtails. But as I was saying, root mealybugs or scale or snails, yeah, those actually feed on the orchid and you need to get rid of them. And the best approach is to unpot the orchid and remove all of the insects you see. In the case of mealybugs, for example, remove everything that you see from there, do the treatments. So obviously you should repot in that case because the life of the orchid is at risk. And lastly, when you see a lot of dying or dead roots in the pot, when you see a lot of brownie roots and you can tell they're not stiff anymore, you can tell they're mushy, they are gone. Those roots will act just like breaking down medium because they are breaking down organics and they can spoil the medium faster and release byproducts and acidify the area around the roots and they can affect the healthy roots as well. Now having dead roots or rotting roots in the pot doesn't necessarily mean it's an inappropriate medium or an old medium. It can also mean that the orchid was not watered for a long period of time, maybe on transport, and the roots simply died off in the process. And now with water, they're starting to break down, even though they were dead and dried beforehand. But in any case, if you see a lot of mushy roots in the pot, through the pot, definitely have to repot sooner rather than later because they will start to affect the new roots as well. We need to cut them away and repot the orchid, preferably in fresh medium. So that's another very good reason why you might want to repot an orchid, even if it's in bloom. But now let's talk about some reasons which you might think are important, but actually they're not as important. First off, you might think the pot is a little tiny. Sometimes it happens that we buy these orchids with a million roots inside the pot and you're thinking, oh my goodness, the pot is too tiny, the orchid will start to suffer. No. Epiphytic orchids such as Phalaenopsis do not mind if they're crammed in the pot. Absolutely not. They're actually pretty happy about it. The worst part is more for us because as the roots take over the pot, they kind of dislodge the potting mix. So in the end, 
the pot will not retain water, so you will have to water more often. But other than that, really, the orchid doesn't mind if it's crammed in her pot. It will find ways. Don't worry if it's crowded in the pot. You can wait. You might just have to water a little bit more frequent to compensate for the lack of potting mix, but other than that, the orchid is absolutely fine. So don't go ahead and repot orchids because they're crammed in their pot, thinking they're suffering. They're not. Another reason is drying too slow or too fast. Yes, even too slow. If your orchid dries a little bit too slow, you might consider repotting it, or you might consider drying the pot faster. Usually the culprit is sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss tends to stay wet more than you'd like sometimes. Well, a quick and easy tip is to put your orchid pot under a paper napkin or a paper towel or another absorbent cloth and just let it absorb the excess water inside the pot. I do actually have a video on it. If you somehow you want an elaborate video on this, but it's pretty easy. You can remove excess water from sphagnum moss with something absorbent underneath. Make sure that the bottom of the pot and the drainage holes actually touch that paper napkin. And next time you water, make sure you don't soak the pot. Make sure you just run a little water through the top. Sphagnum moss is really absorbent, so the more you soak the orchid or the more you expose the pot to water, the more water it will soak. So you can actually play with the quantity of water, at least for a while, if you want to enjoy the blooms. And if you have bark, obviously, might dry a little faster than you'd like. Again, very good reason to repot, but if you have the time, don't repot it just yet. Water it just a little bit more frequent and enjoy the blooms a little longer. Obviously, this is totally up to you. If you wanna repot, you can repot, but if you're a beginner and you can cope with these disadvantages, in order to enjoy the blooms, in order to enjoy the blooms, maybe postpone a little bit repotting. And lastly, if your orchid is on a mount. Now, mounts in home conditions, maybe not the best way to go about things. I have a video on mounts if you don't know what they are and how it is to grow orchids on mounts. You can check the video in the description. But yeah, mounts do tend to dry out much faster in home conditions than they do in greenhouses. And well, in that case, you will be very tempted to repot your orchid. I typically go ahead and repot it, but the bad thing is you will probably rip a lot of the roots. Mounted orchids are very, very hard to detach sometimes, so you will damage the root system extensively. But if you wanna enjoy the blooms and not work so much to keep your orchid hydrated, you can actually put a bit of sphagnum moss on the actual roots on the mount and that will retain a little bit more water. You can also put the mount in a container of sorts with some sphagnum moss underneath. In this way, the moss will actually be wet and will have contact with the roots, but the roots will not sit in water, you know? So you can work around a mount if you want to enjoy the blooms a little longer. If you want to repot, you can, but it's not really a must situation. You can work a little bit with the mount, but I get it. If you want to remove that orchid from the mount, I totally get it. Right, so with that out of the way, let us go ahead and repot this orchid, shall we? So first and foremost, you have to know that wet roots, really well soaked roots, are much more flexible than dry roots. Dry roots can snap even if you look a little bit more intense at them. <laughs> They're very snappy and we don't want these roots to snap. So first of all, we need to soak the pot. So to do this, I have here a decorative pot. I will place my orchid pot inside and then I will pour water, not on top of the orchid, but next to the orchid or on top of the pot, all the way up. It's okay if it leans. And I'm gonna leave this orchid for five to 10 minutes or so here. I have sphagnum moss, it will absorb the water pretty quick, but the roots take a few minutes to properly soak the water and get really nice and plump. So that's what I'm looking for. Right, so we'll come back in five to 10 minutes. Alrighty, so my orchid has been soaking for 10, 15 minutes at this point. It it is absolutely fine. If it's more than five minutes, don't worry about it. Just don't forget it there for an entire day. Right, so first and foremost, as always, we squeeze a little bit on the pot to make sure that whatever roots are attached to the pot, they just snap off. And when I say snap, I don't mean break. 
they just release themselves. By becoming plump with water, it's actually easier to remove the roots from the pot because they kind of start to remove themselves. And then I'm going to try to grab the orchid from as low as possible on the stem like this. I don't wanna grab it from any individual leaf or even from the flower spike and just pull and jiggle or wiggle a little bit the pot and here we have it and look at that i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you a close-up so you see what is in this pot oh this orchid needed repotting and i didn't even know look at that what is this even it's a mealy bug no no it is just mold interesting so i'm gonna get you in closer so you see what i do i'm just gonna start to remove gently this sphagnum moss which i'd oh well there we have it this is why it was oof the smell this is why it's going bad this is an old plug a seedling plug which was never removed when the circuit was potted here so this one is going bad the smell right now you guys it's not good so this orchid actually needed repotting. So I'm just gonna remove very gently this core. You know what? This was a very, very, very easy unpotting, wouldn't you say? Sometimes it will not be this easy. With moss, generally it is quite easy, but if you have bark, just try to remove as many bark pieces as you can. If there are still some bark pieces attached, it's fine, leave them there. Just don't leave too many bark pieces attached. It's in your best interest to absolutely remove as much as the old medium as possible. I'm also going to cut away these dead roots. Wow, look at that. And you know what? I'm gonna go at the sink and rinse a little bit the root system. Get rid of all of this and I'm gonna go ahead and do an extra step, which if you ever have mold in the roots, you should do as well. Right, so I'm gonna rinse really fast, nothing fancy, just rinse the excess potting mixture from the roots. Throw away what I have here, I'll be right back. So because I want to make sure that mold spores don't transfer to the new potting mix, I'm going to sanitize with some alcohol this tray. You can also just wash it at the sink with some detergent, but I'm gonna go the route of alcohol. As for the roots of the orchid, we're not gonna use alcohol because it can damage roots. What we will use is hydrogen peroxide, 3% that I put in the spray bottle. You can find the concentration 3% at the pharmacy. If you don't have 3%, you have 6%, let's say. You can dilute it with water in a half and half manner. And no other types of hydrogen peroxide, like for bleaching hair, is not good. Just the pharmacy hydrogen peroxide that you put typically on wounds. And for these of you, you can put it in a spray bottle. So I'm gonna spray not the entire orchid, just the root system. At this point, we're gonna hear some fizzing. You don't need to rinse the root system. You don't need to do anything. Actually, it's good to leave the hydrogen peroxide to act. In the end, it will transform in water and oxygen. So no need for rinsing. I have here a clean pot, which absolutely fits the roots of my orchid, at least for one year. Now we'll be using a mixture of sphagnum moss and bark, but whatever potting mix you like best, you can use. Repot Me has some wonderful potting mixes and I do actually have a video on those potting mixes for when I could import them. Now I can't import them anymore, but I will link you to it down below so you can see the varieties. I think Repot Me changed a little bit some of the formulas. So in the video, I think there is a potting mix which is not cold like that anymore, but check the Repot Me website if you're interested and see how it's cold now. All right, so my orchid looks okay. I'm just looking to see if I have any other dead roots. I don't, that's good. I'm also going to leave this stake because it keeps the orchid from wobbling and it supports the flower spike. So, oops, <laughs> it's okay. My preferred mixture for Phalaenopsis is usually either sphagnum moss, either a combination of sphagnum moss and bark because I live in a warm environment and moss helps me out. But the airiness of the bark makes sure that the roots are extra safe from being suffocated. So I'm doing the mixture in the pot, as it were. You can mix it outside of the pot, obviously. If you have an already mixed 
um, potting mix. You can use it as it is. It doesn't really matter all that much as long as the roots receive both moisture and air. Alrighty, and I like to finish off with a layer of bark. It looks pretty and also it prevents algae and cyanobacteria from forming at the top. And there we have our orchid. Now, my mixture was dry. I prefer to use dry mixtures whenever I pot because they just fall into place much faster. Some people like to use pre-soaked potting mixes. You do not have to pre-soak potting mixes, but if you like to work with wet potting mixes, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's just preference. But if you're using dry potting mixes, after you've done this, it's a good idea to water the orchid. Either you soak it, either you run water through the pot. If you're using more sphagnum moss, there's no need for soaking. Just run water through the pot and you're done. So what I will do, I shall demonstrate on the tray because I can spill water at this point. What I'm gonna do is just run water like so through the pot, not on top of the orchid. I don't wanna put water in the crowns. But I'm just running water just like that and the pot will retain whatever it will retain. There we go. And then I'm gonna put it into a decorative pot and hey presto, my job here is done. And there we have it, my orchid is potted. I chose the same decorative pot in which I uh, soaked it, but I washed this pot because there could be spores in here as well that needed to be removed. So I washed it with some dish detergent and this will be the decorative pot of this orchid. And wouldn't you know it, this orchid, which I didn't really think it had an issue, actually had some mold. So it should have been repotted. But as you could see, we did not disturb the roots as much. I hope it will not give up the flowers. In case it starts to give up the flowers, it's fine. It doesn't mean the orchid is suffering necessarily. It just means it's focusing on other more important stuff. And with good care, it will bloom for you next year. So if you're interested in how to make Phalaenopsis orchids rebloom, check the description. It's a thing. There is the trick. To perform so if you want to learn that trick check the description and other than that this orchid should be absolutely fine now you should care for it just like for any other orchid keep it in warm conditions bright light but not direct sunshine water it regularly whenever it is dry and through a transparent pot you can definitely see when it's dry fertilize it regularly and it should absolutely do great. Being that it's in bloom, it might not put out the new roots very soon. So don't be scared if in a month you will not see new roots. That might be normal because it's hanging onto the flowers, but at some point it will produce flowers. And most importantly, if you see an orchid, you just repot it starting to have wrinkly leaves and becoming droopy, cut the flower spike. It's Hard to cut the flower spike, but it is for the benefit of the orchid. The flower spike consumes a lot of energy, a lot, a lot, a lot. And maybe the orchid does not have that energy. So it might hang on to the flowers in its detriment. And we don't want that. We want the orchids to be healthy and then we want them to bloom. Alrighty, so I hope this video helps you out and shed some light on the repotting while in bloom subject. I get many questions about it and I hope I've answered. If not, let me know and we might elaborate the subject in the future as well. In any case, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Thank you Repot Me for sponsoring yet another episode and this entire series for the past four years. Hope we get another year. We'll see in January. But it has been a joy to make this series for you guys. We cannot run out of subjects to talk about, especially for beginners, right? So again, thank you so much for watching this entire series and today's episode and I wish you all a great time with your orchids and a great new year. With that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!